Now then, you are welcome back. So Sky Sports are going to broadcast all of their 14 GA Championship fixtures live on Sky Sports Mix, which is good news for you if you don't have a subscription. It is wildly available to approximately 900,000 homes in Ireland on Sky Channel 416 or on Virgin Media Channel 409, which means, in short, as well as seeing all the games, you'll be seeing this fella on your TV screens over the next couple of months. Peter Canavan, hello. Great to have you with us. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, Joe, but there you have it. I didn't want to say. It's a great thing. It's a great thing, surely. It's a nice gesture, especially for the times we're in. I'll, t- I'll take it as that. <laughs> Do you enjoy the punditry? I don't mind it. Um, uh, it beats uh, running around, chasing a ball, taking, taking thumps left, right and centre. Um, but look, no, it's, it's not too bad. It's great. Up until this year, it was great to be in the middle of things, to be going to Clonus, to be going to a pack Croke Park and getting to sample the atmosphere of these really big, important occasions and, and, and great matches. And thankfully, these past few years, I was able to witness a, a number of brilliant spectacles. So now, Ponder 3, this year is going to be uh, somewhat different. We're going to be at the games, all right, but... Uh, uh, games without supporters, without fans, without noise, is uh, it'll be different. Um, but if the club championship is anything to go by, at least we'll have quality fair, we'll have quality action. And despite the the lower attendances at, at the club games, both hurling and football, the, it didn't take away from the quality. Mm. One of the great things you do, and you do it at half time and sometimes at full time as well, is show where everybody is spending their time on the pitch. Such a simple thing, but I mean, the days of 15 against 15, as per the numbers, are so far behind us. It's a great thing when you're watching on TV, and I'll often hit pause and have a good look at it to know where the hell everyone is and who's on who. Yeah, and look, we don't get enough time to go through the various things we could show and what teams are trying to do. Football now, uh, Gaelic football is a completely different game than, than when I was playing. It was straightforward. Uh, when I started playing, it was a corner forward, number 15, third midfielder. What a tactic that was, and uh, that's the way everybody played. And uh, if you had three very good inside forwards, you didn't have a third midfielder. Um, but now at, at this, uh, the game has transformed, and even club football this year, um, and how some teams are able to implement contrasting styles. Uh, Dungannon won up here in, in Throne and one of the best ever championships in Throne. And at times they played, they played a very orthodox football. It was man on man. They had big men inside and they were moving the ball quick, trying to get it inside. And there were occasions when they were playing, literally they had 13 or 14 men behind the ball, defending, working hard for one another and then hitting teams on the break. So. Uh, they could adjust and, and they could play different styles. But players nowadays, you, ha- you have to be clever. You, ha- you have to know what you're doing. You have to know what your role is in the, in the team. And, and the game literally in the space of 10, 15 years has been transformed from a tactical point of view. There were some growing pains during that and there was some criticism. But I have to say where we are now, it does seem like it's in a good place. And as wonderful and vibrant as the games were in your time and before, it's now very hard to watch some of those games where fellas are just kicking possession away every two seconds. Uh, it's hard to believe uh, when you watch some of it. Some of the some of the players that you looked up to and thought were smart, intelligent footballers just lashing the ball uh, down into the hands of a sweeper. Um, but look, while it's transformed and, and the game has been brought on, there's still occasions. We had a Derry County final last uh, weekend, two good sides, and through tactics for long periods in the first half, uh, teams were going nowhere. The ball was going from side to side, and it, it was hard to look at. Uh, you could understand exactly what uh, the two teams were, were trying to do, and at times it became a, a game of patience, and then all of a sudden the game of football can break out. But uh, the onus now is on good management and good coaching because... You have to get the best at, you know, at whatever is at your hands, whatever's at your disposal. And in some cases, you have coaches and, and managers playing a very defensive or negative style when they're very good footballers that, that, that they could should be playing a completely different style of football. So um, that's the level of coaching and the level of management now has never been under as much scrutiny. And I suppose that's good. And, and um, players now, as I said earlier, I think... They're, they're becoming uh, 
uh, having to think more. They've become more thoughtful on the pitch. And the teams that win and the better sides now have, have, have smart players um, and who can deliver and who can play different styles of football. And so do you think we are moving towards more of the positive aspects or is there still an issue with negative football? You know, you mentioned that recent game, for instance. There'll, there'll, there'll always be an issue with that because at their at their hand, if they want to play 13 or 14 men, if they want to play 15 men behind the ball, there's, there's nothing to stop them from doing that. And there may be occasions when they want to do that. But the thing is now, uh, opposing teams should know how to play against that. Uh, they should know how to bring the players out, suck them out. Um, Dublin became experts at it because um, for a year or two, we thought, right, it's the only way to beat Dublin is the, the Donegal style, get the men behind the ball and they don't know what to do. That lasted about a year and when teams, and, and Throne were one of those teams that tried to play Dublin in, in that manner, Dublin were ready for it. They, they had another game uh, plan ready to implement and they knew exactly how, how to break it down. And that's what good teams and what good management should do. Um, that's why they're the best uh, in the business. So um, from that point of view, uh, it, it leaves football now, Gaelic football, to be more intriguing. Uh, there's a lot going on. And I suppose it's our job at half time and, and after the game to try and highlight and show the viewers what, uh, teams are, are trying to do and uh, that the game is not as straightforward as it used to be. No, it sure isn't. So Dublin's still very much the team to beat ahead of this very strange championship season. Kerry right behind them and then maybe what, a bit of a gap to the likes of Galway, Donegal, Mayo, Tyrone, is that how you see it? Fair enough assessment, I probably do. Um, this year different things come into Dublin's favour. Um the very fact that it's back to the traditional style and the provincial setups, which mean um, if you compare Dublin's route to an all Ireland semi final to Donegal's route, uh, completely different. Um, Dublin will have time to to find their feet uh, to get themselves ready. Realistically, Mead are capable of giving them a game, but you still expect Dublin to win that with something to spare. I can't see anybody else in Lance to really get them close to Dublin. So. Um, and they're in an all Ireland semi-final, one more game, a tough game, and they're in a final, whereas the likes of Throne, Donegal first round, and then the winners of Armagh and Derry, definitely, and I would think that could be and should be Armagh, they're the up-and-coming team here in Ulster, and then if the Throne or Donegal were to get through that challenge, you're looking at probably Monaghan in an Ulster final, just to get into an all Ireland semi-final, so uh, in terms of of a route through and, and uh, it's very much in, in Dublin's favour in, in that regard. The only thing that's going to gain them and we can talk about their key players that they don't have which are in recent years they've done without key players and it hasn't made one bit of difference such as the, the strength and depth uh, of their panel but and it's a big but this year we don't know what they'll be like when they lose uh, the man in, in charge of them in, in terms of Jim Gavin and as much as Desi is respected by the Dublin players and the Dublin supporters, um, he's a different man. He has a different way of doing things. He's a different personality than, than Jim Gavin. So that's the unknown coming into this year's championship from, from a Dublin viewpoint. Another big thing that I've been saying this past two or three years, it hadn't made much of a difference, but the hunger element. Uh, don't tell me that the Dublin players are more hungry to win an All Ireland than than players from from Kerry or Mayo, or uh, they've been there, they've done it before. That's why they can afford some of them to take a year out and, and go and do other things. Um, so, um, of course, six in a row is a big challenge, and and Desi will be saying they're hungry, but we'll only know that whenever they're put to the pin of the collar. Mm. I mean, it's really hard to make your, the argument that it is possible to be as hungry for your sixth in a row as your first after a famine. It can't be. It, 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 <laughs> and they've surprised me. And, and again, it's, it's credit to them as individuals and, and credit to, to their management setup, the way that, that they have come back. And uh, they have been put to the pin of the collar on occasions in, in recent years, Mayo and, and Kerry last year in particular. And we were waiting on a comeback and, and we got it. Uh, they didn't shirk from the responsibility. Uh, 
they were brave, they were courageous in the way they went and, and, and played their football. So they look that they're one of the greatest teams ever. So that they have answered all their all their critics. They have nothing to prove. Um, which is amazing the way that, that that they've come back time after time. But I, I think um Jerry's definitely getting closer. Um Galway's up and coming. Donegal have, have serious potential and in, in, in terms of the Ulster sides, they're the team um with the strongest panel of players, quality footballers all over the pitch. So there, there's teams that are getting closer, but um the format and plus the, the other big factor coming into this year's championship is that uh new managers um are coming in with new players and, and trying to gel a side together and, and, and maybe play a different style of football. Virtually impossible um because they have such limited time to work with their players. You know, I'm thinking of Mickey Graham, who's gonna to have to introduce a number of uh, the crosser lock side because they played so well during the summer into his side. But it's going to be so difficult for them in a matter of weeks to become accustomed to other players uh, and tactics and style of football that, that, that say, Mickey Graham wants to implement. Whereas Dublin seasoned campaigners, 12 of the 15, maybe more of that side, will pick themselves. They can adapt their style of play. They know each other inside out. So the more seasoned teams um, this year's uh, championship will, will probably play into their hands a bit more. Yeah. I think last year a lot of people looked at this young Kerry team and said the potential here is enormous, but they'll struggle to put it up to Dublin in 2019. And boy, did they! So the likes of Clifford and these guys, these these aren't this is not potential. These are ready to go at the highest level. What do you make of them? Where are they short, if in any spot? Um, well, you always would have had question marks in recent years defensively um, over over Kerry, but the way they performed against Dublin. Um, in the two games last year uh, was first class. Throne really exposed them in the in the semi final in the first half. I thought, um, so there's still possibly question marks over their defence. But compared to this time last year or pre championship last year, uh, Kerry's in much better position. Um, I did fancy them last year, but it was largely based on on up and coming David Clifford and and. and He's a, a once in a lifetime uh, player, and he's capable of getting the best uh, out of the rest of those Kerry players, and, and they believe in him. So, and according to Kieran Donaghy, Sean O'Shea is now in much better shape than he was uh, last year. Clifford's a young lad, and and uh, Peter Keane has brought through a lot of these younger minors, so they all will have developed physically. But more importantly, I think uh, uh, this year coming into the championship, Kerry will not be happy to run Dublin close or to compete or or, or uh, to get to an all Ireland final. I think that they'll have firm ambitions this year to win it. So mentally they're probably in a in a much better position. They'll believe that they can win it like like a lot of Kerry teams do. So um of, of the contenders and for those reasons I still think Kerry's uh best place to to take Dublin's crown. Mm. Once in a lifetime is a hell of a statement on Clifford. Don't think many will disagree with you at the same time, but once in a lifetime, that's how good he is. Oh, without a doubt. Without a, just a sheer pleasure um, to watch. You, uh, you, you never know what he's going to do next with off left, off right. Doesn't need perfect ball in either. He's such a big, strong fella. Getting bigger, getting smarter. He's going to have to deal with the nonsense of... of uh, players at him off the ball maybe he struggled a wee bit but the, the I would put that down to learning um we've all had to how to do that um you don't like it but again he's got to get used to the fact that maybe umpires and, and linesmen uh don't use their senses as well as they should and he's going to have to deal with that but uh, at inter-county football um he, he will get more protection and uh he's still young he's still getting better and and, and that's Hard to believe, but really looking forward to to seeing how he performs mm. in this year's championship. How did you deal in your playing days with that off the ball niggle? Um, well, initially, you depend on on protection from umpires and and linesmen, and on most occasions that's that was the case. But unfortunately, and we've witnessed, and he suffered at the hands of Throne and in, in the National League. 
through umpires and, and linesmen not, not doing their uh, their job. And there's going to have to be occasions where he's going to have to sharpen his own elbows and uh, uh, try and, and deal with it at, at times himself. But I don't think, I think players will soon realise that you can't uh, cow David Clifford out of it. He's he's game enough, he's strong enough, um, and he's not going to be that um, easily taken out of the game. Um, mm. um, so so I, I think he does. He's, he's well fit to stand up for himself, but you can't, uh, as I've done on occasions, you know, stepped over the lane and stepped over the mark, and you end up being penalised, and the team end, ends up suffering through your own uh, L- L- discipline. But um, I think he's big enough and strong enough to, to know how to cope with that. Mm. So when you say sharpen the elbows, you kind of mean that literally you had the odd lash out, which is understandable. Do In the later part of your career, do, did your kind of tunnel vision just ignore it and act like it wasn't happening? Or did you still have to look after yourself? Well, well, in, in fairness, I wouldn't say off the ball stuff. I must say it on the county level. Um, players know the type of character that, that they're up against. And if they believe, right, I, I can uh, get the be- better of this fella physically, then they'll they'll chance their arm. If they believe they can't, then they'll try and play football. And the best defenders that I came up against weren't weren't those that were trying to get the better of you physically. They were those that were preventing you from getting the ball and, and reading the game better than, than you were. Those were the toughest defenders to, to come up against. Um, so... At times, you, you have to stand up for yourself. Of course you do. And you have to try and create a bit of space for yourself. And that can be hard when there's uh, somebody's got their two arms around you. Um, so at times, you have to learn to try and make a wee bit of room for yourself, Joe. Well, that is one of the great euphemisms I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Not to make you feel uh, old. 25 years now since the All-Star Football or the Year Award started and you were the inaugural winner. 11 points in the All-Ireland Final of Tyrone's 12. What, 24 years of age? Does it feel like 25 years ago? Um, no. No, it does not. Um, it, it, it feels like 9 or 10 years ago, maybe, but certainly not that. Um, and memories of that day are, are still vivid. Um, it was... Brilliant occasion, the old Crow Park, what an atmosphere and, and playing against Dublin in, a, in an all Ireland final. Um, memories you'll, you'll never forget. Uh, unfortunately, the way we played, the way both teams played that day wasn't wasn't brilliant. Um, but Dublin managed to get over the line and we didn't. Um, it was okay the fact that I got a chance to get back there again. But for a, no, uh, a number of players, the majority of the thrown players, they didn't. And they don't have other memories of all Ireland finals to uh, to help them get over that defeat. Um, so it was a tough day from a throne point of view, yeah. I can imagine it was. What are your memories of the morning and the nerves and, you know, like dressing rooms or anything somebody said or even the dressing well, room afterwards all this time on? Well, it was the old dressing rooms, but our pre-match build-up, I don't think we would get away with it now. Um, myself and a number of players and the manager, Art McCurry, actually went out for nine holes of golf. Um, we stayed out of Finstown House and uh, it was lovely uh, summer's morning and uh, we actually played nine nine holes of golf. Oh, I don't I don't think too many would be doing that now. Um, Sorry, are we are we talking golf? Or are we talking pitch and put? We're we're talking whatever holes there were at Finstown House. There there were it was a nine yeah it was I think it was an eighteen hole golf course. But we played. <laughs> we so that means you put holes. down about seven or eight k there, Peter. Well, well, there, there might have been buggies on the go, Joe. I'm not too sure. Okay, fair enough. But, fair enough. Um, no, I, I can recall, yeah, um, getting up early and, and, and going out to oh, sort of relax the mind, pick your, your mind off it. Um, but uh, the occasion itself, yeah, special. Um, and uh, I can't re- recall too much about team talks or, or anything like that there. But afterwards, it, it was the old change rooms in, uh, uh, at the bottom, uh, at the corner of the Hogan stand and the canal end and i just recall it being a dark place um there wasn't too many about there wasn't too much noise about and uh, uh that end of it still haunts me i suppose but um the day itself <laughs> memorable for a lot of 
wrong reasons maybe. Um, Paddy Russell's referee and uh, Throne supporters are, are, are still talking about it. But uh, things, we didn't get the rub of the green, put it like that. And uh, Dublin, after knocking on the door for many a year before that, uh, finally managed to get over the line to, to win the all Ireland for them. Hmm. I've heard of Jack O'Shea and the lads playing a bit of pitch and put the morning in the finals, so it's good to see you carried on that tradition and then some. Um, but I guess it didn't hurt your performance anyway. Did winning well, an All Ireland in '03 and, and beyond did it live up to expectations? I asked that in the context of I've spoken to plenty of players who've been on the show and said beyond the euphoria of those first 10, 15 minutes, and I guess you do have a great night, there can be an anticlimax because you've almost convinced yourself this is the most important thing in your life. Um, I wouldn't say it was uh, an anticlimax, no, and I wouldn't say the night after was was the best part of it. Um, the most moving part of for us winning an All Ireland was was taking the Sam Maguire um, back into the county for the first time, taking it to homes of people who were ill and men that weren't able to get to to the final that maybe had played for the county and men that had the tears in their eyes that had said they never thought they'd see the day that Sam Maguire would come to the throne. So for the weeks and months after that, uh, it was eye-opening from, from my point of view. You don't realise until you do that, that and, and you get a chance to meet those people and, and talk to them uh, and hear their stories about games that they've went to, games that they've, that, that they've played. Um, so to me, uh, at, at that lasted days, weeks, months after it. Um, so it was far from uh, an anticlimax. It, uh, it made you feel more proud of what you actually achieved. Um, you often hear people talking about what it means to older people and that, but when you take the cup around the county and, and further afield, thrown gales abroad, all, all over the world, that, that was eye-opening. Um, done me the, the power of good to, to be able to do that, to say I was part of the team that brought the Sam home. So uh, absolutely not. I would disagree with anybody that said um, that winning an all Ireland is an anti climax Maybe when you win it so many times, you can get to say that. But for us back in 2003, my God, it's scenes and memories I'll certainly never forget. Well, it sounds like you channeled it the right way almost. It wasn't almost about you and this is going to complete my life or my, you know, what I'm about somehow. It was it was about what it meant to the county and people. And geez, that sounds like a, well, what a privilege, I suppose, to go into people's homes that you would never meet otherwise and probably have really interesting deeper than, you know, just kind of small talk conversations in some instances, I'm sure as well. I don't want to do any stick in the mind. Well, absolutely no. But as a player, I would have been very focused and, and selfish to the point of view that everything else was was put aside and, and my pursuit of what I wanted to do and what I wanted to achieve. And it's only when you retire that you, you reflect on that and see how selfish and how well, single-minded maybe that you need to be and that players need to be today um, if they're going to achieve. So a lot of the other stuff that goes on outside around the fringes and, and supporters, I, I didn't have a, a clue really because my life was consumed uh, with actually playing the game. So that was the side you, that you don't see. So it was only when you step out of that and the football's over and you have achieved um, uh, and there was nobody slitting you or running you down. The satisfaction was was within. Um, so to, to go and, and and to see the other side after that and what it meant to people, it, it was an, you know from my point of view and a lot of the other players it, it was eye opening, uh, and a lot of people literally live for for the game. Um, so for us, as, as you quite rightly said, so we, it was a, such a privileged position to be in, and that's why it's great to see teams that haven't won it and, and clubs that haven't won it here again and didn't win the championship up here and thrown for the first time 64 years. So again, the scenes uh, and to speak to people after, that's their year made and for a lot of them that's their, their lives made that they've seen their club uh, win a county title that they thought they would never ever see. So um, those scenes be repeated all over uh, the country with clubs that haven't won or haven't won for a long time. And that's what that does for an, an area an area and a community. Simply invaluable. Yeah. Sadly, 
with COVID, I, people will be robbed of that this year, I would suspect. How has the year been for you? I mean, it's utterly surreal what's going on in so many ways. Yeah, um, well, as, as I said earlier, from, from having feelings of desperation at the end of April to feelings at the end of August of uh, elation and uh, admiration for, for what's going on around the country in terms of the, of the club. And the, the positive that has, has come out of it, it has opened the door, it's opened the window. Uh, and thankfully, counties have take, taken the opportunity to get games streamed. And you got to see uh, club games, uh, both hurling and football, all over uh, the country. And if you know, that doesn't normally happen, or we don't get to see it to the same extent. And I took advantage of that. And, and some of the games, the hurling games in Antrim, the, the, the temporary hurling final, my God, you never see the like of it. Um, and then the same can be said for the quality of, of the football games and, and even the, the, the county finals in Armagh, county final in, in Cavan, our own and throne here. Unbelievable. You, you just couldn't believe some of the things that, that were happening in it. So uh, on the one hand, I'd say we're, we were blessed with being able to still watch uh, the game that we love and, and we think so much about and thankfully for, for different reasons uh, the clubs were able to step up to the plate um, in terms of quality, in terms of uh, excitement it, it was brilliant viewing ac across the board so that has really been a massive plus for, for the GAA and I say moving forward is probably going to have serious ramifications as well as to how the season is, is going to be uh, constructed and hopefully that there'll be a bit of reconstruction um, in the years ahead in terms of a split season uh, for mm. club and county. Yeah, it certainly looks like we're headed that way. Uh, last point, I suspect now you're having to get used to being Dara's dad as opposed to Peter Canavan. Uh, well, I was always Dara's dad uh, for a few years. <laughs> I'm, talk but, I'm, um, I'm talking more about people in the street coming up to you. How's he going? How about all this kind of stuff is... is blown up around him. I, I, do you kind of wince and think, oh God, I want him not to have all this attention on him, courtesy of his father? Yeah, I would prefer not that p people judge him on his own merits. And in fairness, uh, uh, I think they do. Um, that's always going to be the case. But look, he's he's, uh, he's followed in, in my footsteps and in, in, in that he's picked up an injury or two. So he's had a quiet season with, with the club through broken bones in his hand and, and arm. So um, but he's level-headed. He he knows the story. Uh, he plays the game because he loves it and, and he enjoys it himself. And whatever he does, he does. Um, so he's he's level-headed in that regard, and he doesn't read too many paper, papers or be in social media too much. So he knows he knows the story. Good. Well, look, we wish him well, and it's, and I think he hurt his wrist a while back. What were you like as a father on the sideline? Um. Learning to be patient, I suppose. Uh, like a lot of other supporters, there's not much you can do to influence things on the sideline. Sorry, there's nothing you can do to influence things on the, on the sideline. So you have to take the rough with the smooth and be it for him or any of the other lads in, in the club here. They'll have good days and they'll have bad days. Um, they'll, they'll pick up injuries and knocks. They'll, they'll get on the wrong side of referees and, and calls and, and whatnot. So it's a case of... of uh, learning and he's he's doing that fast. So, um, but in terms of being a supporter, no, definitely not, definitely not a good one. <laughs> Doesn't shock me to hear that. Listen, thanks for the time. Very best to look over the, the the coming months and enjoy the TV work. And hopefully, we do get ourselves an intercounty championship. Peter Canavan, thanks so much. Thanks, God. Thanks, Joe. All the best.